if you think you already know everything After Effects can do, you're wrong. These 5 effects shouldn't be even possible. Yo, happy first day of summer everyone, welcome back to your favorite series. Unique effects. I honestly lost count of which part this is, but that doesn't really matter. Cause you're here for one reason only. 5 new unique effects you probably didn't know were possible in After Effects. Some of the stuff I'm about to show you is something you generally wouldn't even think of on your own. Alright, no more wasting time, let's jump straight into After Effects. The effects are gonna scale up in intensity, so the first one is pretty simple, nothing too crazy, but by the third one you'll probably say, wait, what? How is this even possible? So let's start. First thing we need to do is cut out our character using a rotor brush. You already know the process, just select the character, press Alt plus W again, refine the selection, and then hit freeze. After a bit of waiting, everything is ready. Merge the rotor brush settings to mine and duplicate the layer. On the bottom layer, remove all the effects. Then duplicate the rotor brush layer one more time. Now, on the very top layer, we will start adding effects. First one is texture noise paint. Here we are just creating a texture that looks interesting. So, copy my settings. Next, we add an effect that literally nobody uses. S glow darks. You don't need to change much here, just slightly reduce the glow white. Right now it doesn't make much sense, but trust me. Next, add curves and roughly recreate this curve. Then, emboss shiny. Reduce the values, cause we only need a subtle emboss. And finally, glow. I'm using PC glow here. Now place this layer underneath the main rotor brush layer and scale it up a bit. Final touch, create an adjustment layer, add grain, make it visible, then mask it using the previous layer, like this, and send the blending mode to soft light. And that's it, the first effect is done. And yeah, you should probably stay, because the next one is way crazier. Just look at this. Yeah. So let's break it down. First, create an adjustment layer and add vignette. The vignette needs to be square, so tweak these values until you get something like this. For a subtle transition, you can animate the radius so it goes to zero and comes back. And the shape the graph like this. Perfect. Now, pre-compose everything. Ctrl plus Shift plus C. To add some movement, we throw in a flicker. No explanation needed here. So, then create another adjustment layer, and this is where the fun begins. Add the CC vector blur and tweak it so the entire image smears like this. Then add edge glow, and honestly, you can replace it with a simple sharpen effect, cause with this angst it gives a very similar look. After that, add glow darks again, darkness like this, threshold like this, glow saturation here, glow white here, and yeah. Next, add posterize time and set it to 10. Almost done. Add deep glow, just a tiny bit. And for extra texture, one more adjustment layer with a grain set to overlay blended mode. And that's how this effect comes together. Alright, before I jump into the next effect, I wanna show you something I've generally been testing lately. This lip looks normal right now. But instead of rebuilding everything from scratch, I'm gonna modify it a way that keeps the performance exactly the same. The motion, the timing and even the emotion, while completely changing the world around it. This is a Ray 3 modify inside Dream Machine by Luma AI. What makes this different from other AI tools is that I'm not guessing anymore. I'm actually directing. The character stays the same person, the movement stays intact. But I can push the look, the environment and the cinematic style whatever I want. Here's the original image shot and now watch what happens when I apply Ray 3 Modify. Same performance, same timing, same body language, but now the entire scene shifts into a cold, cinematic winter atmosphere. The mood and the environment all change together instead of breaking apart. This is especially powerful if you work with the real footage music videos, short films or give it AI workflows, cause Ray 3 Modify preserves physical logic instead of generating random results. I can lock character identity, adjust keyframes to control how the shot evolves over time and treat this like real post-production instead of prompt gambling. This is honestly the first AI video tool where it feels human-led, not AI-led. If you wanna try it yourself, I've got a QR code on screen and link in the description. Alright, now let's actually use this modified clip and push it further with the next effect. So this one is gonna be super simple, but insanely useful. I've got this Christmas theme shot and the original RAW footage. First thing we do is cut myself out from the original clip using a water brush. This time it's important to spend a bit more time here, so there are no artifacts and all the details stay clean. I didn't really do that and cut myself out pretty fast just to save time. So yeah, there are a couple of imperfections. 
Now let's try to blend this into the main environment. First add Triton and set it to match the main color of the composition. Then mix it in slightly, around 80 or 90%. After that add the Lumetri color and start adjusting contrast, shadows, highlights, all the usual stuff until it starts looking natural inside the scene. At the end add a very subtle drop shadow just to ground the subject. And the most important part here is color grading. Create an adjustment layer and apply one of the LUTs from my pack. If you are wondering all the resources and plugins I use are available on my website. And after the final color correction, this is the result we get. Alright, moving on, fourth effect already and the intensity just keeps going up. Just look at what we are about to break down. This one is insane. Alright, first, trim the first two or three frames from the next clip, then pre-compose it and cut out the character again using a brush. Once that's done, duplicate this pre-comp a few times and offset them one after another to create this lagging effect. Now we move into stylization, pre-compose again and add embossed shiny, just a tiny bit. Add mosaic, set the value so you can still recognize the image, then drop shadow to create depth, grain for subtle motion. And finally, threshold with settings like this. For variation, I slice this precomp into single frames at start, offsetting them, changing colors, basically creating one frame glitches. Right now it looks like this, and uh, now we add movement. Create an adjustment layer, add a twitch, enable blur, light and slice. Animate amount and speed to around 20 and 15. Yeah, that already feels better. One more adjustment layer, and now we add a transition from my plugin. If you missed the previous tutorial, go watch it immediately, cause this thing speeds up your editing workflow by more than 10 times. I already picked the transition I want, apply it and uh, everything instantly snaps onto the select layer. And this is the result, looks insanely good. And finally, the last effect. No intro, straight to the point. A lot of you asked how I do text effects, so watch this. Create your text, right click the layer. Go to create, then create shapes from text. Now the text is split and way easier to work with. Go into properties, find the first letter, in my case it's number 8, open transform and animate scale so it snaps in, stretched upward and then returns to normal size. Shape the graph like this, then just copy this animated scale and paste it onto the other letters, offsetting them by a few frames on the timeline. That's it, base animation done. Now, styling. Add the gradient. I'm going to be the purple tones here. You know how gradients work. Add inner glow. Change the color to purple and increase the size. Optionally, add bevel and emboss very subtly. Precompose everything and add my favorite deep glow with this secret settings nobody knows about. This already looks good, but we are not done. Add CC glass. I'm not even sure it's necessary. I played with it for a while, but add some variation, so try it. And of course, grain. Go back into the pre-comp, add an adjustment layer and apply grain. Now a really cool trick, add CC blobble eyes. Tweak it until it looks interesting, duplicate the layer and remove CC blobble eyes from the bottom one. Now you've got a fully stylized text. You can leave it like this or add a drop shadow, tweak it, change the gradient to green and experiment with the blending modes. Exit the comp, check it in the main timeline, go back, tweak, exit again, repeat. And that's how I got this final version. Congrats everyone on the start of summer holidays, happy new year and happy birthday to me.